said, this will be a year of many uprisings. Even in America, I kept hearing the words rigged, rigged. It's against the will of the people. That I may overthrow the God of government in the hearts of men. Then I heard the Lord say this, surprise. <laughs> Conversations happening in Texas over the, the brink of civil war, the Lord says, I will give you a wartime president. Nobody's paying attention to us. Quickly, let us rise. NATO will shake as intelligence agencies are exposed. The Lord said, pray for China. I felt like they were almost saying, the seas are too choppy to make the move we want to make now. A mighty revival was coming to Brazil and they'd uncovered some kind of wealth that was hidden in the nation. Then I began to pray over Africa, and this is the time I started to really weep, and I'll share some things that I saw. I saw anger fueled in the streets. Don't let another year go, said the angel of the Lord to me. Repent and change quickly. Open your eyes, embrace your differences, it was time for the council to be brought together. How shall Nigeria be rescued? Hello, everyone. I believe we're gearing up for an uh, interesting year, prophetically. Uh, you all have probably all who have been journeying with me in the prophetic will have seen previous words in which I shared the beginnings of World War III, uh, the the war uprising in Russia, the Sudanese disaster uh, that we saw even recently, cures for sickle cell that we've seen come to pass. Uh, we've been watching as the Holy Spirit has been bringing to pass word after word after word. And this is, as we've already said, the year of the open door. It's also the year of more. And I want to share with you some things that I saw, but this is not to uh, say, you know, look at me again, prophet of God, here's the before, here's the after. No, the Bible says, there arose the sons of Issachar who knew the times and the seasons and what Israel ought to do. See, the most important thing when we release prophetic words is not to uh, say, we heard this or we saw this or this word came to pass, no. The most important aspect when releasing a prophetic word is what the church ought to do. How do we function? How do we partner with the Holy Spirit? How do we prevent some things from happening? I don't, I don't know about you, but I'm glad some of my words didn't come to pass. And so we've been praying against some of these words uh, coming to pass. Uh, but we know that we're dealing with a God who loves his people, a God who has an opinion about the world. And it's this God that we want to hear from today. And so I opened this prophetic word. I just sat with the Holy Spirit. For those who may be familiar or unfamiliar with my process of receiving the prophetic, I'm stepping into a realm more and more where I'm sort of teaching people as I go along in the prophetic how to receive words from the Lord. And let me tell you something. Whatever you don't care about, God doesn't speak to you about. Whatever you don't care about, God doesn't speak to you about. If you don't care about the nations, God won't speak to you about nations. If you don't care about the world of business, God won't speak to you about the world of business. Whatever you care about, God will speak to you about. And I just so happen to care about the nations. I care about the church. And the Lord had quite a few things to say. And so I sit in a room. I typically just take time to pause and listen, engage with the Holy Spirit. And suddenly I'll start to hear his voice or see visions or things like that. And I just try and capture as much as what I see. Uh, but I think the issue often in the prophetic is you can see, but how well do you interpret what you see? And so I'm praying to God for grace to interpret some of the things that I saw. This is how the Lord spoke to me. The first thing I saw as I was waiting on the Lord, he said, this will be a year of many uprisings. I saw uprisings, particularly in Africa. And I saw, and let me not say a year. God, I believe God speaks in seasons. This will be a season of uprising. Uh, they shall not like the election results. 
I saw many in Africa, I saw even in America. I kept hearing the words rigged, rigged, it's against the will of the people. Um, and I said to the Lord when I heard this, because there was massive riots, massive uprisings, uprisings not just about the election results in, in many nations I saw in Africa, uh, particularly Ghana and in the United States, but not just these sort of casual uprisings, but I said, God, why the uprisings? And the Holy Spirit said to me that I may overthrow the God of government in the hearts of men so that men would know I've made them a government. And this was probably the first time when I was writing this that I really heard the heart of God break. And it reminded me when I heard him say this of when the children of Israel asked God for a king like all the other nations and it broke the heart of God. Why? Because God's original purpose for man was that men would rule on earth as kings and priests, not that they would have overlords who would decide for them what to do and infantilize them and make them passive. And so the Lord says what this is going to allow to happen is a sudden uprising of grassroots movements, individuals who engage themselves as self-governing with their own economies who would unite uh, in, in this way too. Then I heard the Lord say this, surprise. <laughs> and I, I don't know about you, I don't often like surprises, sometimes I do but often we don't like the uncertainties, but I heard the Lord say surprise. He said, I have surprises in the political sphere, especially in America. At a time, people will cry out, divide, divide. And I saw conversations happening in Texas over the, the brink of civil war, or uh, just like Brexit, does Texas have to separate from the rest of the United States? Now, this isn't the first time I've, I've seen this, and I've prayed against the sort of disintegration of Texas in the past, but I saw, particularly in the, in the States, this beginning to happen. Um, but the Lord says, I will bring back a win to America, and many will rejoice, and many will mourn. If America prays, the Lord says, I will give you a wartime president. If America prays, the Lord says, I will give you a wartime president. Now we all know wartime presidents like Churchill. We know wartime presidents like Thatcher. You may not associate her as one, but in time of austerity, she knew exactly what to do. She made difficult, often tough and unpopular decisions. And I heard the Lord say that this will be one who's not bought or sold by the opinions of man or media opinions, but this will be one who will cut a thin line. Then I saw like a snake in the realm of the spirit. It was recumbent, it wasn't moving. Everybody's eyes were somewhere else while this snake was getting large. And I said, God, what is this? And the spirit of God said to me, this is North Korea. North Korea is laid like a recumbent animal saying, nobody's paying attention to us. Quickly, let us rise, let us advance. Let us uh, build what we need to build while the eyes of the world were on Israel, while the eyes of the world were on Russia. North Korea was uh, involved in something. And the Lord says, pray. Pray that I begin to expose some of the plans. Pray that I begin to expose some of the agendas that are, that are hidden there. I saw a lot of their finances moving more and uh, more into developing their war machine and their artillery. And the Lord said, pray, 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 pray for some exposures that needed to take place in North Korea. And, I, and many, many uh, were, were sort of rebelling. Many were breaking out. Many were receiving news from the outside world into North Korea. There seemed to be some kind of resistance and it was like a, even a bit of a prayer resistance that was rising in that region. And it feels like something akin to the Berlin Wall, uh, which is in their nation, it's more like a media wall, just needs to be shattered so that people can get the necessary information. I feel like if you're an intercessor watching, North Korea needs to be a target this year of some of your prayers and intercession. Then my eyes turn towards NATO and the law says NATO will shake as intelligence agencies are exposed. Money will be removed, says the Lord, and moved around. People will say not paying their fair share. The law says I will cause a whistle to blow and many whistleblowers will rise in NATO. Uh, they, would, they will deny it. 
They will manipulate the people. But I will show, I will wake men out of their sleep and their slumber, and suddenly there'll be an awakening. I felt like part of what God was even talking about with regards to this was also an awakening around intelligence agencies that we were going to see. Almost like what you saw with Edward Snowden, only this was refined. Like Edward, uh, Edward Snowden, for those who don't know, was the man who exposed much of what was happening around 9-11 and also revealed a lot of what was happening in the war machine versus what the media was showing us. It was all a whitewash. And I saw a lot of whistles being blown. I saw a lot of exposures. I saw a lot of people going to jail in, in, in places of government, uh, people who people thought would never see justice. I saw that the Lord was releasing a fresh wind of justice. The Lord says also, pray for China. Now, this is what I heard, particularly around the summer. The Lord said, pray for China. I felt like they were almost saying, the seas are too choppy to make the move we want to make now. There was a move that they obviously uh, want to make, and we are praying and resisting that China ever moves upon Taiwan. But there was a, a, there was a move. I saw danger upon the seas, even danger upon the transatlantic. They were hesitant, but wish to make their move. And there was a he hesitation that I saw, and the hesitation was, if this man gets in, we make our move. If this man doesn't uh, get in, then we won't make our move. There was a hesitation, a lot of hesitation was around financial issues. But then I saw that almost like the economy was not what it pretended to be. Um, and I know a lot of people are concerned with bricks and different things like that, but I saw the economy wasn't what it was meant to be. I saw Brazil suddenly come in front of me as a nation, and the Spirit of God was specifically speaking about the nations. A mighty revival was coming to Brazil, and they had uncovered some kind of wealth that was hidden in the nation. I, uh, I don't know if it's to do with oil or what it was to do with, but they'd uncovered some kind of new, fresh reservoir of wealth. And there were several prayer assignments over Brazil. And I saw the Spirit, the wind of the Spirit moving over the nation, to, uh, and uh, he said, pray, I will topple one and raise another in, in his place, says the Lord. The church in Brazil is a mighty worshiping and praying army. Now, what was interesting about Brazil? I know they had their elections. What was interesting about Brazil was I had an encounter the day before their elections where suddenly, I don't know, in my body, out my body, I was in a rainforest fighting and we had to storm the government house because some unfair decisions were made. It felt like things were really rigged. I feel like if Brazil will pray at this time, God is going to expose something so scandalous, something so hidden, that their prayers would actually have the ability to topple some injustices, move some things aside. But also I feel like Brazil has a real chance to heal the young at this time uh, of the nation. I saw a great groundswell of revival coming through the nation. But the Lord says, I want you to resist now, almost like what looks like it's trying to come into the nation, which is a swell of communism. And the Lord says, I want you in a place that you resist, resist, resist with prayer. And you've got to pray some uh, confusion over some talks that are happening in government places in the nation of Brazil right now with regards to global agendas trying to sweep into play, to turn that into a bit of an, a melt pot and into a bit of an experiment. But pray, things will, uh, things will change. Um, in the midst of it, the Spirit of God says, and excuse me if I read this off the screen, but in the midst, the Lord says, I'm giving my people ambassadorial status through favor. Those who treasured wisdom and the fear of the Lord will see my hand in power. I've prophesied this before and I keep seeing it happening, but we're going to see it happen at a greater level. The Josephs, the Daniels, and the Esther company is arising. And in the day we're in now, we are going to see those young, anointed warriors, and some of them older, rising up as God's war generation, prophets born in the time of war. We are going to see this crisis apostles rising from the traditional church and becoming the solution tacticians to rules of nations. 
The pharaohs are truly calling, says the Spirit of the living God. This is what one of my daughters said in a live, and it just so resonated with my spirit when I heard it. The Lord says, the pharaohs are calling. And so what, uh, uh, what I know is coming is a great falling away of churches. Some of the names that you used to know just kind of uh, slipping into a bit of irrelevance and new apostolic movements arising. In the midst of these apostolic movements that I saw, uh, there was a desire to move the church into the last reformation. There was a desire. They said, we are not currently designed for the world we're in right now. And there was a big push to drive the church into the next phase of reformation that the church needs to be at right now. And God knows we all know that this is overdue. Then I began to pray over Africa, and this is the time I started to really weep. And I'll share some things that I saw. I saw anger fueled in the streets. People were tired of being pacified. Tensions were rising. It was time to throw off the oppressors, and change was in the air. Many attempts were released to quell this movement from government and military. People began to cry out. The word I kept hearing in the realm of the spirit was enough. I just kept seeing it. It's like some people started making it on hats and t-shirts. Enough is enough. I just kept hearing this word being shouted in the realm of the spirit. Enough, enough. I saw the spirit of fear over Nigeria. And this is when I saw Jesus really cry. I, I, in a vision, I saw the Lord moving over Nigeria and he started weeping. I said, Lord, why are you weeping? I saw the spirit of fear over Nigeria. She was trembling. The Lord was rushing in. He said, I am your rescue and your safety. People were saying, how can this injustice be? The Lord was in the mist. It was like when a martyr dies, like Stephen, and it gives birth to a revolutionist like Paul. Change. No more second place. Put us first, they cried at their governments. The angel of Nigeria wept. It was time for the apostles and prophets over the region of Nigeria, especially the emergent ones, to observe the greatness of the fathers and honor them, but also look at the mistakes. And the Lord wept over the disunity, the disjointedness, and the responsibility upon the apostles and prophets in Nigeria that are rising to unite as leaders, and in so doing, unite the body. I felt like the Lord placed a fresh challenge on the leaders in the Nigerian church, uh, the emerging leaders, to come together and not to build their own individual empires. But to begin, the Lord said, to stop writing visions for their churches and start writing visions for the nation. The Lord said, the power is in your hands. Don't let another year go, said the angel of the Lord to me. Repent and change quickly. Open your eyes. Embrace your differences. It was time for the council to be brought together. How shall Nigeria be rescued? The church became a servant like Joseph to the government and it was time to interpret the dreams of Nigeria. Then I heard the Spirit of God say this, the stage is set. Suddenly my eyes turned to the Middle East in the realm of the Spirit. They were playing chess, but the West was playing checkers. Iran was the provocateur. It had weaponized those, particularly in Syria, as a martyrdom state. And I felt like the Lord wants to lift that off of Syria right now. That it felt like you were just going to be the cannon fodder of Iran. 
that there was an acceptance of fate and civilians were caught in the mist. They were ready to die. It was time to deal with the head of this octopus. The spoils of oil was the narrative in the West. People were protesting. This is what you did to Saddam. This is what you did in Iraq. Why should we believe you and back you in this war? Suddenly, cool water was poured on hot heads in the Middle East. Decisive action was taken. I see the West at a crossroads. Either it was going to please and pander to public opinion or make the decisions that needed to be made. America had enemies within. This was a year of great exposure. You will reap what was sowed. The gloves were suddenly off as people began to go after their political opponents who had gone after them in a period, previous season. I saw the enemy within. It was as if the hand of China and Iran and Saudi Arabia were inside America, causing uprisings, making strange bedfellows with other justice movements, disintegrating America from within so that the job from without would be easier. I saw men in the UK, and this was the second time I perhaps, I perhaps wept. I started to look into the UK, and I saw men in the UK like beasts of burden. On top of them, they were carrying, almost like when someone carries a king, they were carrying a very fat man. I said, God, who is this fat man? The Lord said, Eglon, this is the fattened calf. Now, if you don't know who Eglon is, Eglon is the king who was defeated by Ehud in scripture. He was, the Bible reports that he was a very fat king. I saw how men had fattened the tax system. Eglon actually means a fattened calf ready for sacrifice. I saw how men had become gaunt trying to live the best way they could to feed the economy whilst they were starving. I saw how they had just worked and worked and worked for a system. And the only one who could kill it was Ehud. Ehud means united. The Spirit of God says, your collaborations and your united force is going to help you overcome in this next season the spirit of Eglon that I saw. The voice of the UK needed to be undivided. Taxes and shortages were choking the middle class and the lower class was just as much, if not more, of a victim. There was no relief, very little mercy. Prices soared and rose to undeniable levels. I have allowed it, says the Spirit of God, that the spirit of entrepreneurship, the spirit of Ehud would rise and kill this fatted calf. People needed to be united, but the church needed to be the voice. I have plans for you, UK, of redemption. I have plans for you to be the nation of justice once again. Corruption is eating at you. Your systems are flawed because your culture is fluid. It was time for change. My voice and my spirit will drive it, says the Lord. Advisors needed to rise. Your advisors in the place of government. It was time for the voices of unity to arise in the UK. This all can leave us in a bit of a perplexed state and I don't want to leave you like that. I believe in the UK we need to pray for Rishi uh, Sunak as I saw him many times shaken, many times called out on hypocrisy. And I believe we need to pray for the spirit of wisdom to come upon him in this season. What can the church do as we navigate the terrain and these days? Well, number one, those that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Now more than ever do we need to not just know God, 
be known by God. Number two, we need to have vision and not ambition. We need to see beyond ourselves. Vision builds boats. Ambition will build an ark. Number three, we need to grow in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. This isn't just knowledge of the word. This is knowledge of the world, the systems of the world, and how they work. Number four, we need to move into, from the church era into the kingdom era. You see, you have the family of God, the school of God, the government of God, and the army of God. We need to make our transition from the church to the school where we're trained and developed by master builders. We need to join the government of God where we understand how God's kingdom works and how it can apply in the earth. And then we need to be the army and ambassadors of God who are sent into the very systems of this world to bring about reformation in the nations of the earth. God bless you. I pray for each and every one of you that when God calls in heaven, and he says, who shall go for us? You will say, here am I, send me. God bless you.